Welcome to the Way to Go podcast, Bill McMahon, Mark Hostetler. And uh, we. by the time you hear this, a lot of things have already transpired. Mm -hmm. Today, when we're doing the show, we've had a concert of prayer, and that was great. You know, I appreciate we did a podcast with uh, Nobles Darby the 4th. Yeah. Uh, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was great. That guy yeah. is a terrific guy. If you get a chance, go back the podcast right before this one. Uh, look it up, listen to it. We encourage you so much because he had a ton of good stuff to say. His testimony was very powerful. He did. And yeah. I would say we probably had 400 people at the Conference of Prayer. It was encouraging. There was a lot of kids there. They uh, they were expecting 120. I don't know if 120 actually came out, but that's a decent amount know, of kids I mean, for that, a prayer that whole, breakfast. The whole I mean, front was full of kids. Yeah. I mean, from one end of the stage to the other at tables to seat 10. How many tables to seat 10 did you have? 11. 11 or 12, 11. Okay, well, then you, uh, yeah. you're pushing so 100 you're right, or more. Right around yeah, there. And was... then there was some other kids out on the, on the outskirts, too. So we're just so blessed to see so many people come out. It's 645 in the morning, you know, 7 right. o'clock in the morning. You're eating breakfast. You're having a prayer service. And there's a bunch of kids there. That, to me, youth, I should say. Right. That's so encouraging. Right. You no, know? it is. I, yeah. I love that. Not actually, only so. that, but the the amount of people that came out, the different churches, the government uh, right. authorities that came out, you know, um, uh, different, different people representing their desire to see God move in our County, right. I think is a very important thing. And, and God bless Ryan uh, Nevels for what he's doing, right. you know, and, and, uh, you well, know, yeah, you hope you, the church is big enough to uh, wow. sustain over time because I mean, so if, People keep wanting to come. We, we had a, we had yeah. a great, it was a huge turnout. But one of the things I want to talk about today, um, shifting gears, hear them grinding yeah. as we shift quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> remember those days of grindy gears? <laughs> right. Oh, I remember. I was a truck driver you were for a truck six driver. years. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have an excuse. I wasn't a truck driver. I just ground them anyway. No, we uh, talk about anger because I've heard that mm. uh, come up. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes the biggest thing when I'm talking about anger is this. It's between your left ear and your right ear, a lot of it. Yeah. Your anger comes because you have a block goal and you don't realize. In other words, you set an arbitrary goal. That's a great way to understand it. I'm in Eagleville. Let's say Jefferson's five minutes away. I set as my goal, I'm going to be in Jefferson in five minutes. Then, mm -hmm. so if I leave at, let's say, 4.55 and I want to be there at 5, then an older person pulls out in front of me. And now I'm going to be there at 5.01. I'm telling you, the stuff used to tick me off mm. because I'm like, now I'm not going to be there at 5. And I remember reading this book talking about your goals and talking about how we set arbitrary goals that we don't need to. It creates frustration because as soon as somebody blocks our goal, we get frustrated. Frustration leads to pain. Pain leads to anger. Yeah. So now I'm um, outraged. So I remember reading the book and they said, just change your goal. That's right. Why? Because frustration lives in the area between expectation and reality. Right. You expect to be there at whatever, five o'clock or whatever, right. and you get there. The reality is you're never going to get there in that time. Right. So change your reality or well, yeah, change your it, expectation. Well, not, well, reality is not yeah. once the slow poke pulls out in front of me. And they used to, like, I used to be one of those people, my whole attitude, I came out of the East. I came out of the Philadelphia area for a while, and it was either drive like a predator or become prey. <laughs> that was our saying, okay? Yeah. So you're either drive like a predator or become... So I now this whole mentality gets plopped by God down into Ohio is what happened. So, you know, here I am. And sometimes people pull out in front of you and I, I wanted to talk to them. Like I actually thought this was a good idea. I thought that everyone's <laughs> driver's license should be their cell phone number. Oh, so I could no. call you from behind and tell you what a bad job you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, listen, no. you need to get out of my way. You need to use your turn signal. Oh, wow. You're ridiculous. You know? So I thought that that would be a great idea. You know, everybody's license plays your cell phone number. Uh, which maybe, I don't know, maybe, Maybe we should go to that. Leave but. us a comment. Let me know what you think. Yeah. It'd be <laughs> interesting to see how many people say. <laughs> well, they're probably yeah. laughing like the rest of us are. But once I read that, actually, that your anger is because you set this arbitrary goal that got blocked, mm -hmm. and I changed my goals only one time in traffic in 20 plus years do I remember getting upset. And that was because a trucker came down too hard on an older couple and was actually bouncing, trying to stop from running over these people. That wow. upset me one day. Wow. And I thought I was justified yeah. in being upset because, you know, mm -hmm. you're driving recklessly. There's an elderly couple. They're on the right. They're driving the lane they should be in. They're not in the passing lane. Mm -hmm. You still almost run over them. I, yeah. I just, I didn't care for that. Other than that, honestly, like I just don't get mad in traffic anymore because I don't set those goals. That's good, man. Because right. I tell you what, you expectations play into this a right. lot, right? So um, you, I would say you, yes. you have expectations that don't get met. You get angry. Now, here's the thing. Anger is not a sin. 
Right. You can get angry. Right. The question is, what are you going to do with that anger now? Right. You know, uh, fools give vent to their anger. That's right. what it says in Proverbs, you know. Uh, be angry, sin not. That's what it says in Ephesians. Right. So we're given instruction on how to handle our anger. Right. Do it in a controlled way. There's a lot of times we get righteous anger, like right. you're talking about. I didn't feel it was right for that truck driver to come up against that old couple that's righteous anger. Yeah, I that's think, okay. You know, yeah, um, that getting was angry uh, of some of the policies that allow babies to get born, you know, right. to uh, aborted. Right. That to me is, I get angry about right. that. Right. You know, but with that guy, the truck driver, I didn't flip him off. I wasn't swearing at him. You didn't I give vent to your anger. No, no, yeah. I didn't. No, right. I was aggravated about it. I kept going on with my life. Um, you know, I didn't let it ruin my day or anything like that. I talked to somebody too, and I think that they had a mentality of, well, when you talk angry and you get upset and you get demonstrative and you're yelling at your kids or yelling at your wife, that's how you get your point across. So, because that's kind of how they grow up. Well, that's just, that's how you make your point. Mm. And so I was trying to instruct recently uh, with somebody I was talking to and say, listen, I had a speak softly, carry a big stick mentality. Mm. Not saying I never yelled. I did Mm -hmm. not saying I've never lost my cool. I have, I, I will fully admit that I do. I consider myself patient. Absolutely. Am I perfectly patient? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, generally speaking, yeah, I was pretty patient. But there are times you could push me past my limits. And so yeah. I do start losing it. But I just told him, I said, no, you don't. No, you don't have to communicate that way. If you can't just communicate something. Yeah. I remember being a coach. Okay, for example. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm a coach. Varsity coach, soccer. Kids would say to me sometimes, coach, you need to yell more. I said, no, I don't. I said, if I yell, I'm out of control. I said, it takes a lot of emotional energy Mm -hmm. that I don't want to pour into. I don't want to have to come in here every day and yell at you. That's not fun. I just want you doing your job. I just want you running the drill. I ask you to run. I want you Mm -hmm. trying hard. I want you working because you want to get better. Not because I'm sitting here beating you down the path Mm -hmm. and yelling and screaming. If I have to yell and scream, I've lost control. And once I've lost control... That's not a good thing. You're you know, not operating at that time. You're not operating in the fruit of the spirit, which is self-control. And, and I've patience. noticed And patience. Right. You're right. I've noticed in myself, if I open up my mouth when I'm mad, I'm going to have a hard time coming back from that. Yes. I have to give, give myself time. Just don't, just allow me time not to talk and I'll come down. Okay. But if I, if I talk when my heart rate's over a hundred, nothing's good is going to come out of that. I'm going to say hurtful things. I'm going to have to try to retract what I said. I'm going to have to go apologize to people because a fool gives vent to his anger. And I'm telling you, when I give, when my temper goes off, I become foolish. Right. I say a lot of stupid stuff. Right. I end up damaging things. I don't want to do that. Right. Never want to do that. So I have to learn how to take my, uh, I love how, you know, Pastor Steve, our brother used to say, take those emotions off the ceiling and bring them down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Just, just yeah. bring those emotions right. down. Right. You know, and, and we have to practice that, especially in our relationships and our closest relationships. Sometimes I'll say things to my wife that I would never say to you. Right. Well, why is that? Because my expectations. Right. Come back to expectations. And sometimes yeah. my wife says things to me that yeah. she, she wouldn't say to anyone else. <laughs> Truth. Listen, yeah. listen to it. I'm, I'm the type of human that can drive people to anger. Trust me. Like yeah. I could be, I'm, I'm a handful actually, you know? So yeah, I'm just, I'm just being me. Of course, you know, bumbling around, but I, I feel this way. James one nineteen is a great mm. verse. Be oh, quick, man. quick to hear, quick to listen. Slow to slow to talk. Speak. Yeah. Slow to anger. Why? The anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. Exactly now, as one right. person I was I was encouraging in this area just recently, I said, look, what productive has ever come from your anger? What productive has happened? Mm. The fact of the matter is nothing productive has happened because what you have here is you have people learning bad patterns. You have here people who don't want to talk to you. You have people who are potentially intimidated by you Mm -hmm. because you can't keep it under control. These are not good outcomes. So if you look at what the outcomes of anger are, Mm -hmm. oftentimes if I'm out of control and I'm running my mouth and you shoot that bullet, that verbal bullet out of your mouth, once it's out, dude, you can't catch it. You can't, they hear that so fast. You can't, oh my, I didn't mean to shoot that. It's just like a bullet out of a real gun. Once it's out of the barrel, it's Mm -hmm. heading towards its target Mm -hmm. and you're not going to stop it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop that verbal bullet once I fire it. So I need to just calm myself down and not say mean things. Yeah, that's right. Just don't say mean things. I agree, man, because that person, whoever wrote that nursery rhyme or whatever it was, you know, sticks and it? stones may break your bones, oh. but words will never hurt me. You know, that that is false, man. 
That is so false. Words penetrate. Yeah. Much deeper than that yeah. stinking you, stick does. You, you can't I mean, break my bones with sticks and stones. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. Come on. I'm well, tougher than that. I'm telling you that. what. You can break my spirit. You can break my spirit by words. I know. You know, you, you, can, you, can, you can set a path for a child. I'm telling you, you really can. Yeah. I, you, I know. I've had to go through counseling because of some of the things that were said to me when I was just a little kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they stick with you. And they have a way of just penetrating your spirit, man. And I'm telling you, most of that thing that was said was said when my dad or somebody else close to me was angry. Right. And, and they, that hurts. They forgot it and you didn't. Well, yeah. that's all what uh, I wish I could remember the exact lyric. Matt Carney had a word about, or Kearney had a word, uh, song about that. Mm -hmm. And he was self. And so it's funny or amazing the things that you think 10 years down the road, like the mm. words you still think mm. about. Oh, I'm telling and you. And when I heard that song, I thought, yeah, that's because he's thinking about what his parents said to him and, well, and the whatnot. Scripture, the scripture lets us know. I mean, it says you have the power of life and death in your tongue. Right. You can destroy people with your mouth right. or you can be a positive influence and you can build them up. Right. I want to be that second part. Right. I want to be the positive one. Agreed. You know, I want, that's why it's so important for me, me specifically, personally, to, to examine where I'm at, my heart rate, whatever it is, when I'm in a conversation, if I sense myself getting angry, I've told my wife this over and over again, just give me 20 minutes I can't talk right now right? because if I do, I'm going to end up saying something I regret and I don't right. want to do that. So you just got to kind of monitor your own um, ability, you know, to, to, to navigate through a conversation if you're mad, you know, I agree. Yeah. I, I think of, uh, <clears throat> listen, I, you can judge me for this if you want. It's, it's fine. Uh, I like Lincoln park, some of their mm -hmm. songs and uh, actually lead singer Chester Bennington uh, took his life and you listen to the mm. stuff that guy talked about mm. how the echoes just lost in the memories he, he would sing about you know what I've done you know I, I'm I don't want to be you you know you could just tell this guy had issues man mm. like mm. just things that went on where I'm spending my life not, I don't want to be you, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be, and I'm thinking now I'm, I've never really researched to see what he's talking about, but I'm, I want immediately father son relationship, yeah. you know, that obviously yeah. the wow. man struggled and actually it, to me of all musicians that have ever ended their life. I think there's something about him that bothers me more than anyone wow. else. He's one of those guys that I thought was so talented and, you know, his lyrics so real that I, I just, I mean, I wish that guy was still around. So it, it's made me sad for a long time that, you know, he's not around and he just had these issues and it just came through in his songs. Oh. And I think sometimes that you were talking about hurting people with your words. Yeah. Some of these people that are singing about this stuff, I mean, they're trying to overcome the things that they've been through oh, yeah. in their life. And it's a, it's a hard thing. But anyway, anger does not work the righteousness of God. That's one mm -hmm. thing that we have to mm -hmm. realize. It is absolutely counterproductive. It's not getting you anywhere. So be slow to anger. Yeah. Be slow to anger. Mm -hmm. We're told in Ephesians chapter four, mm -hmm. in your anger, do not sin. Didn't say don't be angry. It just says, no, it's a, it's an emotion. Anger is an emotion like joy is an emotion, like sadness, mm -hmm. emotion, a lot of emotions. Uh, anger is one of them. Sometimes we do get angry and we get frustrated in your anger. Don't sin. That's the counsel. Mm -hmm. Don't you, you, you can be angry. You can't say mean things. You can't break things. And these are the two things that are often going to happen. Yeah. We're, we're, what are we going to do when we're angry? We're going to say things. We're going to break things, yep. throw things. Sometimes you don't even mean to break it. You just throw it. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes I've been upset and my phone's gone flying across the yard. You know what I'm saying? But I had a right to be upset about mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like there, this is stuff that's game changers in people's lives and people close to me, like total game changers. So yeah, I had a right to be upset about it. You what know what I'm saying? Is what I'm, I'm hearing the information about it. Like Moses probably would have thrown throwing the phone too. He broke yeah. the, Moses broke the 10 commandments. The first yeah. 10 commandments, <laughs> Moses broke them. He was all Struck the rock. I mean, this guy, I mean, he just had a temper. He's a, he, but he, but he was never condemned for that. There was wow. no one that ever said Moses shouldn't have broken the 10 commandments. He broke the 10 Why commandments because they were worshiping a golden cat. That's right. He came down so, from an encounter right. with God almighty, right. giving the people right. that he redeemed right. the commandments to live by. Right. And my phone was okay, by the way. My phone yeah. was okay, and I went <laughs> okay. and got it. I went and yeah. found it, and I got it. It was just, but I anybody around, and actually one of the other pastors, uh, Steve 
I was talking to him about mm-hmm. it, like right before that occurrence. And he knew, I mean, he knew what was going on. He knew why I was upset. And, you know, a, again, understandable. Anybody should be upset about mm-hmm. things that should make you upset. This is just not good stuff. Devil um, stuff. The you Lord know? says, but I, but oh. that's not sinning. What I'm saying is that to me, that's, mm-hmm. that's not sinning. Sometimes mm-hmm. you, you have a right. You're going to be angry. Don't, I wasn't mean to that person. I wasn't hurting that person. I wasn't damaging yeah. anything of theirs. I was yeah. nothing but loving as far as I told you the truth, but I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be kind and I'm going to be firm in the end of, at the end, it all came back around, you mm-hmm. know, everything turned around and went the way it should, the way we would want it to go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in your anger, don't send. And it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And I think that's an important one because mm-hmm. you look at the put off, put on dynamic in that passage, put off the old man, put on mm-hmm. the new, mm-hmm. put off anger, then I'm like, but what's the put on? Like he just said, don't give the devil a foothold. But really the put on is settling it. Instead of being angry and being in a, a condition of anger and staying in anger, mm-hmm. settle that anger. Yeah. He said before the sun goes down, what that means is not literally always before the sun goes down. Sometimes it's best, you're, you're angry at midnight, it's best shut up right? and, yeah. and simmer down. But <laughs> I agree with that. What, yeah. what the point is, is as quickly as possible, settle these issues with people. Because if you don't, I'm going to tell you what, you don't get these issues settled right away and they can haunt you for a long time. I have tons to say about it, but I'll I'll leave you go. No, that's so good, Bill. I mean, because that that part you just talked about, don't give the devil a foothold. Right. Uh, My translation says, don't give him an opportunity. Right. You know, it's it's if you do this wrong, you're just allowing the powers and principalities of the air, darkness into your life. Right. How about this? Uh, Crucify your flesh. Right. And do it the way Holy Spirit wants you to do it. Right. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, you know, act in those ways. And, and finally, self-control. You know, right. I love this question that the Lord asked Jonah. Is it right for you to be angry? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that right. text. That's a Jonah 4.4. 4. Do you have a good reason? Do you yeah. have a good reason, basically, is what he's asking to be angry? Do you? A lot of times, I mean, no. it's it's a great question to ask yourself. Just stop and go. Wait a minute. Do I have a good reason to be angry right now? You know, when and I'll, a lot of times, honestly, a lot of times, what I've noticed is I'm angry because I'm trying to defend myself, right? It, because I feel like I was misunderstood or misjudged or whatever. And you come to defending yourself. You know what? Just stop. That. No, I think I mean, the way to avoid defending yourself is to put other people on the defense. <laughs> good. That's a good model. I like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I, I I get it. But listen, a lot of times I've told people, look, we're not angry about world hunger. Yeah, we're angry because somebody pulled out in front of us. Right. We're we're angry because somebody forgot to give us our coffee. We're mm-hmm. angry because they didn't put sugar and we got it black and we asked for two sugars, two creams, and we didn't get it. That's why we're angry. Right. I I just feel like a lot of times it's petty. You know the mm-hmm. things we're angry, and I think about times where I was unglued, like unglued, unhinged. And I'm saying, I'm, we're talking 25, 27, 28 years ago. I mean, a long time for me when I was younger and and less mature, I would just, I look back on it, honestly, and it's almost shameful. The stuff that I let Mm -hmm. make me that mad Yeah, that I was that angry that you forgot something I asked you to do, which was meant nothing. (laughs) Nothing in the scope of life. Nothing. I'll tell you what. Absolutely nothing. I want, but I was mad. Like it was really something (laughs) and it was, and I was stupid to be honest with you. Like, I wish I could have it back, but I can't, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to take you golfing when I'm (laughs) with my brother. I've watched him throw clubs. I want because the the stupid little ball won't go exactly where he wants it to go. Right. Oh, you know, he's like snapping clubs. He's breaking them over. Stuff. I'm right. like, what are you doing, man? You shouldn't I play mean, golf. I mean, I, uh, my dad finally had to quit playing sports because he couldn't, he couldn't control his temper playing sports. So it's a fun to watch. A I mean, from, oh, yeah. from somebody out here and watching it, I'm like, oh, he, here goes the club, guys. Watch this, right. you know. Well, when I was a kid, church softball was exciting, and it wasn't because of the softball. It's because of the arguments. It's because, I mean, I saw people come to near fist fights over stuff. And a game. It, it is a game. Uh, and I'm like, this is how I grow up in church. Like, I didn't grow up in any. <laughs> there was, there's no hypersensitivity around us, man. There, there's guys holding other guys back because one guy's going after the shortstop or the second wow. baseman. 
You want to get physical? I'll get physical. Guy's got arms that are huge. He's ripped. I mean, he was our Sunday school teacher. We asked him all the time, make a muscle for us. Make a muscle. This is all we wanted. Like, John, make a muscle for us. He was this big cement worker. He had these huge muscles. And he was thinking, I remember, he's the guy that a bunch of our church team, church team, grabbing hold of him to keep him from going after it. The guy's so, I'll never forget it. You want to get physical? I'll get physical. <laughs> He's watching on the church softball. The church softball. Yeah, oh so that, my, my dad was part of it. My dad broke bass. My dad would say, so finally when he became a pastor, he told me, I can't play sports. Like, I, I just can't play sports. Like, I just, you, you got to know your limitations. You like, sometimes to, if you're, like, if I'm playing a sport and I'm so frustrated, if I'm, if I'm fishing, I'm so aggravated, I'm breaking rods. Yeah. I may, maybe I should Probably be fishing. Just, like, maybe, yeah. maybe not go fishing. That's just not a, not a good thing yep. for me. Exercise you know? restraint. <laughs> Practice self-control. Don't do it. I mean. Well, the fruit of the my, spirit's a my, good one. Yeah, yeah. My, my point to him, my brother always is, like, how bad could this possibly be? We're on a golf course. It's a beautiful day. We're enjoying time out here. Who cares if you score right. 10 strokes too many? Right. I don't care, man. You're out there. Just enjoy the day. I oh. mean, laugh it off for crying out loud. I've given my family a lot of stories for when I die <laughs> to talk about at my funeral. But the the one I'd have to be notorious for is going away on vacation. It's going to be a happy time. We're going away on vacation. <laughs> yeah, if everyone's ready on time. <laughs> right. If you're <laughs> not. Yeah. Right. This is between your left ear and your right ear because yeah. we, we can't leave at 510. It's right. got to be 5. Right. You know, or, or it's got to be 515 and not 530. This is what would frustrate me. And then I'm loading the car. And then the next thing you know, the biggest suitcase comes out. I thought you guys just told me I had everything. Oh, and I'm like no. repacking the whole thing. <laughs> You've but I'm, I'm, two I'm minutes. telling you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd be quiet for the first two hours, you know, because <laughs> Billy O was just doing his thing, you know, oh, and um, I would aggravate everyone around me because i start you know whatever chiding them about it mm-hmm. guys what are we doing you know look at we're going on family vacation now the rest of us fine wow. you know what i'm saying yeah. but but i'm notorious at the start of something yeah just notorious for, come on let's go let's go mm-hmm. let's go let's get going does it matter no no nope. does it matter in scope of life no well they talk about it at my funeral probably <laughs> <laughs> bill what is you, it right for you to be angry yeah, right exactly. now oh, yeah. it's like what do you want them talking about you you know <laughs> By you about when it comes to your funeral. I don't even think I said that right, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to talking about when it comes time to your funeral? Probably not that. But I, I laugh about it. Me and my whole family, mm-hmm. we all laugh about it. Mm-hmm. I laugh. I think I'm funny. And I think that's the the area like we're talking about the last guy, you know, mm-hmm. being relatable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that was a trip up point. Oh, yeah. I knew it. Left ear, right ear. Yeah. Get it together. But in your anger, don't sin. And yeah. I really do feel like God has at times were just fueled my heart with patience, fueled mm-hmm. my heart with mm-hmm. kindness and love. And it kept me settled down. You know, I still get frustrated and I'll get, I'll start to get adamant as I get frustrated because I'm getting frustrated with you because I don't feel like I'm Mm -hmm. able to communicate or you're not hearing me what I'm trying to say. So yeah, sometimes, but I'll tell you by and large, no, I'm just not, I think it's a waste of time. I think it, it drains too much emotional energy to walk around angry is not what I want to put my emotional energy into, to be Agreed. honest with you. I just don't want yep. to. But anyway, we appreciate you tuning in to this show. Uh, we've given you a lot to listen to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Mark, uh, thanks for uh, producing this and being mm-hmm. here in the seat. Absolutely. And also producing the last podcast, too. We super appreciate it. But you guys all have a great and awesome and a blessed week.